Hi everyone, this is Vivek Srivastava. Welcome to my channel, Journey of an Entrepreneur. Today, uh, we have for you a very special guest uh, episode. Uh, we have with us Sanket Paratkar, who is the founder of Curomates, which is a very interesting app. So thank you, Sanket, for joining us. And uh, tell us a little bit about yourself and your startup. Sure. Uh, thanks, Vivek, for having me over. Uh, I'm Sanket. I'm building uh, Curomates. So uh, Curomates is a community-driven mental wellness platform. And our, our aim is to make mental health accessible to everyone. In India, more than 250 million Indians are suffering from some mental issue, which is a really, really big number. And unfortunately, less than 12% of these actually get any help. So for this big problem, we need an affordable as well as a scalable solution. And that is exactly what Curomates is trying to achieve. So we have our app live up on Play Store at the moment. And our app is currently used by more than 30,000 users. In the last three months, we have been able to like, you know, help more than 20,000 people find listeners. So uh, it's going pretty well, and we uh, we want to like you know make more and more uh, impact in this way. That's great. That's wonderful. I um, I think as uh, medicine is improving and things like you know the, the the old school diseases like malaria and tuberculosis and all that are going. But what's happening is due to the stresses of modern life, the mental issues are going up more, and the physical diseases are going. Becoming less because of the better healthcare, but then the uh, mental issues are coming up more. So I, I think I believe I, I, I'm I'm no expert in this field, but I believe more, uh, the, like the, the number of mental uh, issue cases are just going to go up and up. I think absolutely. So the unfortunately, I'm not. Uh, so the thing is that the way our lifestyle is changing. You know, in the last ten years, if you must have seen. Yeah. Uh, our Indian society traditionally had a very large family. You know? People always had some uncle and auntie you know, that they can just go and confide into uh, if they're not comfortable discussing anything with their friends or family. Uh, unfortunately, we are going towards more and more nuclear set. Yes. In the, in the last, uh, last last decade or two. Mm -hmm. Additionally, uh, you know, people used to rely more on spirituality in the, right. you know, in the, right. in the previous generations. Compared to this generation, uh, definitely there was you know more exposure to our spirituality, religion, and all. As we are uh, like you know progressing forward, the belief, the faith system in the spiritualism is increasing, unfortunately, or for like for whatever be the reasons. So there is a lack of support system yes, that is there. Very much. So. And and at the same time, our lifestyle also is you know uh, is becoming very fast. You know, I think. Oh, sorry, go ahead. And I mean, uh, the lifestyle is going fast as well as people are trying to be, uh, you know, and to be as much productive as they can in this rat race, right? It's, it's just yes. so difficult <laughs> to survive without being, uh, you know, to, to your best. Yes. Right? So people yes. are like just trying to do the best. But at the same time, uh, the these lifestyle changes are actually hampering the mental, uh, mental health. And there is a need for us to focus on this part. Absolutely. You know, one thing you meant, uh, I think didn't mention was also, I, this isn't so much the case in India, but I've lived about 30 years in the USA. And this is a very challenging part of life there is friendship. Now, I still think here in India, you know, you can make friends and uh, your friends are there for you and all of that. But out there, uh, once you're out of school and college, it's very difficult to make friends. And uh, even if you do make friends, you know, they because they live very busy lives themselves, they don't have time for you. You know, they'll, they'll take a call from you maybe once a week and then that's it. If you call a second time, they'll get, start getting irritated. You know, and uh, which was, you know, when I was growing up as a child in India, uh, in my childhood, oh my God, we, there, there was no, no question even calling or making an appointment with friends. You just show up to their place, you know, and ring the bell and come in and play, you know. Uh, and now it's like visiting a friend is like visiting a doctor. You have to get an appointment and all that thing. Uh, it's uh, and then that cut you know is the problem is now you don't have that support system because friendship is a very good uh, support system you know it, it, if you have a bunch of good friends you don't even need family really uh, but but that even that's a big uh, challenge nowadays absolutely so uh, 
so like you said right when you were growing up you had a lot of friends when i was also growing up i there would be barely an hour that i would not be spending with my friends i was right. already uh, always on the grounds playing cricket if not playing cricket playing cards in my home or right. you know video games and things like that i always had you know a luxury of having friends all over my place the thing is uh, now the situation has been changed quite drastically not just in us actually uh, happening across the world uh, you know this is actually called as friendship relation uh, session sorry uh, uh, friendship friendship recession i am not sure if you are i see yeah <laughs> right so uh, i mean when you are uh, like you know sort of studying or you know doing any activities under the same roof it's very easy to make friends right yeah uh, when you are let's say you know uh, in a classroom you are doing some homework acti- activities homework as together the probability of make you making friends is high but once you get out of that same roof the probability of you meeting someone who with similar interests similar idea similar perspective decreases uh, unfortunately you know uh, especially uh, once you uh, like you know old get older than 25 or 26 years of age yes. it it becomes extremely difficult to you know make friendships yeah uh, there are multiple reasons for that simply because uh, you know your life gets constrained to your workplace because most likely you are working uh, and home so most of the time you spend in the workplace and even if you have colleagues at your workplace that doesn't necessarily like you know right. become your friend right, right. Uh, and you get really really less time you know in your life that you actually go out and you know seek friendship so there are multiple ways you can do it like going to gym and like you know play some sport or right. but eventually the probability decreases and yes. friendship is is extremely important uh for like you said right support system community in general you know like uh, it's you no know, it just mo- is it's actually a lot more than just people right it's, it's it gives you a sense of belongingness it gives you a new perspective when you have like a lot of people around you with similar ideas you know similar uh, vision similar perspectives you can rely on them for support system when you have something some issue you can just talk to them you can understand them you can support each other mm-hmm. so it's actually becoming a luxury nowadays and a lot of things uh, also like you know social media also has a big role to play in this yes absolutely so uh, so that's great so tell me uh, let's let's start uh, the beginning you know you you actually studied computer engineering and right. uh, so how did you get to this uh, thing because this is more the sort of thing say a psychology or psych- you know absolutely. medical major would have done so tell us that right so uh, since i was a kid you know i always always had passion towards psychology i used to be watch uh, shows on discovery and nature natural geography about you know how to de- how my mind can be deceptive mm-hmm. like you know how uh, how does mind work and you know it's not how it seems like to us like people think uh, like you know people have different perspective about them how the mind works that was in the in my school days and you know, after that i eventually graduated in computer science uh, unfortunately a year back one of the uncles in my society he committed suicide oh my so uh that was like very like you know deeply unsettling experience for everyone uh, not just my family, like everyone in the society i still remember you know how uh, that those that couple of uh, days were like there was so screaming uh, and all all these things but that night there were two main questions in my head first was why people who are educated why people who have you know uh, money they why they are not getting help and secondly how big is this problem so uh we started working on this like why do we have these problems so we interviewed patients we interviewed psychologists we interviewed psychiatrists we interviewed uh you know the professors the graduates uh support groups and lot of people to understand more and more about the problem you know why people are not getting help uh and then we realized that there are six main reasons why people are not getting help there is a source the first reason is stigma in the society right i mean right. people don't really open up about the mental issue. people think that even if i open up to someone they'll just make fun of me instead of actually helping me out secondly we have uh, psychologists but there's only one psychologist per uh there's only 0.75 psychologists actually per 1 lakh people right. it's extremely less. i mean one one per 130000 uh, people right mm-hmm. like that number is extremely less it, it should be like four you know so it's like 
seventy five percent less uh, in India. Mm-hmm. And even if you found some psychologist, finding a good one is even difficult. Yes. And yes. And they they can do more harm than good, and I've been through that. Really. <laughs> and uh, it is exp- uh, it is ex- expensive as well. So not everyone can afford therapy. You know, even if you find you know that there's a psychologist, but uh, the cost of their uh, like an appointment is also very high. Then, if someone decides that they want to go to therapy session, there's this sort of skepticism in their mind. You know, like right. will it help me or not? Like I'm just talking to someone. Why cannot I just you know talk to my friend or family? Uh, why should I go to a therapist? Will it actually work or not? Then there's a denial in people's mind. You know what? Right. My issue is just a small issue. It's not a it's not a big deal. Yes. My, I don't have depression. I'm just I'm just feeling sad. I'll just go more doing morning walk and it'll go yes. away. Right, and this optimism in people's mind, you know, like that. Yeah, I'll manage my issue myself. You know, we are taught from the childhood that you know you should be strong, you should you should be able to manage your issues, you should be stronger, you should uh, you should not require anybody else. Right. Right. So people have this sense of optimism in themselves. They are I don't need anyone. Right. Which are the hurdles you know in this journey towards mental wellness? So we thought. how can we essentially overcome these hurdles at the same time if you see uh, current solutions that that we have in the market like you know we have uh, psychologists or psychiatrists uh, you know as a professional that can help you with mental well being uh, you have to either pay like thousands of rupees yes or you have nothing or you have nothing it's even more expensive in america they uh, just to jot in for a second america na there's the number of psychiatrists to people is better than india obviously but Absolutely. the problem is the expense and usually it's not covered by insurance so you have to pay out of pocket which um, <laughs> unless you know you have a very serious mental disorder in which case you know you be covered but for the general day to day sort of uh, depression anxiety sort of thing it does usually it doesn't get covered so the even there people you know don't get that connection to the psychiatrist made right but so when if you think about it you know you can see that there's a one big step that you have to take yes right i mean you either have to pay like uh, this thousands of rupees or hundreds of bucks or you have nothing yes right so people only take this step when things go really really bad yes like you know when it is uh, affecting their personal life and they are not able to get out of the bed you know or the family members are like are you need to go to a psychologist now psychiatrist now then only people you know usually make this jump a lot of people to gain the perspective most people said that you know people usually come very late for the treatment yes they would have come sooner thing would have gone you know even better but because this step is psychologically also bigger right not just financially people need to convince themselves that i have a problem absolutely which is the bigger problem right so we were trying to see you know how can we enhance this how can we improve this and we try to make an analogy with general health right So let's say if you have cough or cold, right? What you do, you do, you go go to a MBBS doctor nearby you, right? And take some medicines and pay like two hundred, three hundred rupees, whatever, uh, like that. That doesn't really go well. You go to a senior doctor, like IMD doctor. You know, it might be something else, not just cold and cough. Uh, and if that that does also doesn't work out for you, go to even a uh, super specialty and you know hospital and things like that. So there are incremental layers, you know, both psychologically as well as economically. You don't have to wait till you till your problem gets really really bad. Then only you take the first step. Right. Whereas the first step in psycho in the, in the mental wellness is just way too big, and that's the problem. We realize we can solve it if we can break it one step down into small small steps. So we made you know multi step solution towards mental wellness. So we have community you know anonymous community where people can just come in, talk with each other, vent out their issues. Just like Twitter, you know, people can reply to you, your post. Uh, then we have volunteer listeners, you know, anonymous volunteer listeners. Uh, let's say at two a.m. in the night, you just want to, you know, talk with someone. You can put up a request on the platform, and we'll match you, listener. The typical waiting time is less than, you know, two minutes. It's even lesser in the night uh, when people are more active. Uh, yeah. That's the second layer. Uh, then we are introducing trained listeners, and uh, in between, so when we are interviewing people, we realize that you know, the psychologist. I also have problem, like as a professionals. Ah, uh, so we sort of found out, you know, how can we help them? So we sort of creating this middle layer, the trained uh, listeners. Ah, uh, then we have group therapies. Group therapies. Ah, uh, 
can also be become like you know very very useful solution for common issues and then we have you know experts at come and uh, like in thousands of people that purely you know if you want to make consultation so we yeah, have this multi uh, step solution essentially is to help people on board you know take this journey towards mental and all these solutions are in the app yeah they are in the app at the mo- at the moment uh, first two layers are built the third layer we are actually launching in next couple of days so please right. stay tuned yeah, yeah. right and we'll be eventually like you know keep on, we'll be keep on making more, more and more progress uh, in the next couple of months wonderful wonderful so tell me uh, you told me about how the idea uh, grew in your mind and you know all of that but uh, when was it that you realized uh, you were going to start the, start the the app itself and launch it and, and all of that or even before launching it how when you decided okay i'm going to actually produce this app and get developers to develop program it and all of that so when did that happen like the where you where you go okay i'm not going to work at a company i'm going to do this right so uh, when i was doing my computer engineering that time i had very uh, passion for entrepreneurship actually uh, like i actually wanted don't wanted to like you know take any placement i wanted to uh, follow this route of building my own startup and uh, at that time actually i got a national uh, I won national competition, national Smart India Hackathon back in back in 2018. Uh, I won one lakh uh, rupees prize. Uh, my team won it, and we also got interviewed by uh, na- national uh, TV channels like Zee Chowis Tas and DNA newspaper. Right, uh, we were building solutions for farmers mm-hmm. back then. Mm-hmm. So uh, you know, in India, medicinal and aromatic plants actually don't have. So we farmers actually don't uh, understand the potential in medicinal and aromatic plants. awareness is very less the global market is 60 billion dollars and india's contribution is not even in the top 10 countries we are an agrarian country right yeah. so there was a huge scope uh, for uh, india you know to become a, a leader in that space but farmers were not aware about it and more than awareness there is a there was a gap between farmers and between fraternity and the entrepreneurs for selling this exporting business so we built a platform called as aham uh to you know help this out and we actually so like i said we got media coverage and we also won national awards we were hoping you know essentially to create a startup in the same field in the agritech field but uh eventually we didn't end up like for, for, for some reasons like like the founders other founders wanted to pursue jobs uh and we realized you know there we need there are some things that we need to learn from the business point of view after that i worked as a software developer in a in a fintech industry which was also my third industry finance because i had a lot of interest in finance uh then covid struck and in covid my co-founder anirudh uh, he actually saw his friend another friend his mom was suffering from this chronic illness called as als uh it is the same uh, ailment uh, that stephen hawking was suffering from oh so it's a extremely rare uh, condition and it does have no cure so if you get it you you have very limited uh, period you know to survive and because this was very rare condition the, the there were no facilities in india as such that were you know very much well known and because the condition was very rare it was very difficult to find someone else who had this condition uh, and especially in in a market like in, or, you know in a place like india where uh, people don't really talk health no as openly and right? because people think that uh, you know if i talk about my health to somebody else then they'll just uh, sort of uh, you know like sort of isolate my, my my family you know especially in terms of arranging my something like that so uh, they were trying to find out you know how other patients have dealt with als but they were not able to find out any so that's the problem that started curomates with initially uh, so i built out the platform anirudh was trying to find out you know how can we market it out and uh, we sort of had launched an mvp went and we sit in tata memorial hospital for cancer patients we sit in kem interview people uh, and show our mvp you know how how this will help out help you out and then we re- uh, when, then we like you know after this interaction we had a lot of points pointers and then we realized that this is a big problem people are trying to find out similar patients like themselves but it is not on the topmost priority of them so uh at the same time uh, this the uncle in my society had committed suicide so we thought as a founder uh, you know as a founder market 
market fit we have better market fit in this segment because we personally have gone through you know therapy uh, and and we have a, we understand this market better so we switched to this part so when you say we uh, did you have co-founders were they your friends or colleagues uh, or something right. so uh, my batchmate from computer engineering anirudh he is my co-founder he did uh, mba from iit kolkata while i was working as software developer in uh, a fintech company uh during covid we had a like you know online call and we said you know what let's just start let's just create a mvp let's see how how it works out so that uh, that we had a mvp we tested out with the real users we realized that we can we need to pivot we pivoted to mental health then we uh, we went to uh, we went to iit bombay's eureka competition and we won that competition which is the asia's largest startup competition and we had the uh, we had the pleasure to you know uh to represent india at the dubai world expo 2020 yes. so yeah, that was a very good experience i'm sure yeah so how did you do at that at the expo that wasn't a competition it was just an expo yeah so after the competition the winners were taken to dubai uh, to represent india so uh, the dubai world expo essentially had a lot of uh, countries pavilion right so india's pavilion was more focused on the technology and the startup development so we had a lot of uh, like a chance to interact with the investors uh, the the public that was visiting the expo and showcase you know how what are we doing such nice so that takes me directly to the next uh, point i wanted to ask you which was finances and investors and all that so how did you i guess in the beginning you bootstrapped but then after that uh, did you get investment or um... so yeah so initially we start like uh, we have started uh, our company by us, our own funds only we got uh, a prize money from eureka which also helped us uh, in some way uh majorly we have bootstrap we wanted to ensure that you know we validate our business model thoroughly and you know get as many insights as we can about the market to see and make experiments as well so right now we have arrived at stage uh, you know at which we have validated our business model at the same time we have got a decent traction so we'll be we are planning to raise funds in the next couple of months okay very good very good um so tell me about uh do you uh, you know hiring people i'm i'm guessing you have more than just yourself and anirudh uh, did you hire people how did that go did you have challenges with uh, you know your staff or even third parties that maybe you outsource work to so uh, with me and anirudh actually we have complementary skill sets uh, so for example i've been working in software industry so i know how to build uh, softwares out both you know all almost all the areas and anirudh has been work, working as a, as a marketer you know as a freelancer and he also has an mba so we were able to do most of the th- things by ourselves from design anirudh used to take care of designs he would uh, you know create uh, advertisements and things like that I, i would build it out i would build the front end back end uh, we together used to conduct user interviews we also used to do testing so most of the work actually used to do in house only at the same time we also because uh, because the work it's too much right and as a founders we need to focus more on the business we also hire interns from colleges right. so people who actually have you know zeal for entrepreneurship who uh, sort of want to see you know how startup works out we give them exposure uh, and and i think it's always best to you know uh, intern with a sta- you know, you know, with a startup right if you intern with a corporate you barely get a chance to like you know get your hands dirty whereas when you work with a startup as an intern the exposure that you can get is just a bit too much yes and also help you like you know uh, rapidly learn you know things that you should have or uh, that you can learn how about any third parties no not, nothing uh, major in that not not yet because so we actually also have like you know a financial constraint as right because we are bootstrapping it so we want to uh, ensure that we uh, save as much as money as we can and spend money towards making experiments once we are very much sorted with the business model that we have we can go forward you know uh, with raising funds cool and then and, and i'm guessing your infrastructure setup is pretty minimal as well you just uh, uh, because it's just an app and you're using like something like an aws so you don't probably you don't even have uh, that much hardware software sort of uh, exactly and so as as a thing right we have we need we had to pick a tech stack that actually had a minimal maintenance right because if we if we uh, take our own server we have to like uh, involve a lot of people maintaining the back end maintaining servers we uh, use serverless uh, less tech stack uh, by firebase so it's it's pretty neat uh, i had i had experience with firebase i had experience with azure and things like that as well but i picked 
Firebase for that. It's a no SQL. Uh, it's easy to uh, incorporate. And our aim was to create MVP. And after the MVP is created, uh, we had good connections with investors. So we are pretty confident, you know, sort of to take this MVP to, right. uh, you know, to make a brilliant product. And then once you get the funding, you can maybe change the tech stack. Too. So absolutely, absolutely. Support the larger numbers. Absolutely, we'll be like having you know multiple uh, sort of backend the uh, frameworks. You know? So we're having multiple layers uh, in the backend. At the moment, it's serverless. Right. So we uh, use as much as you know offerings that. Firebase so you probably works. didn't run into many challenges with all of that since you Not yet. I had personally the same these challenges when I was to work in a corporate uh, firm. Uh, there we had to like you know maintain the whole server balance yeah. okay, like both UAT development production environments and things like that. So I have seen that I realize that you know there's no way uh, we need to spend time on this part of the problem right now. Our aim should be to interact with as many users as we can, gain their uh, uh, inputs, try to see how can we work on their feedback and provide the solution. Nice. Tell me about Firebase because actually I'm using it in my own app in a limited way. Um, it's it's mm-hmm. not the primary uh, backend, but it is there for certain purposes. Um, mm-hmm. what, what, I guess at some point though that that will not work, work out. I guess when the numbers get to a certain. Uh, yeah. So charging Firebase charges uh, can actually explode when you have a lot of users. Let's say if you hit like a million users, then it can actually really, really like, you know, suck a lot of cash. Uh, I think that at that time, uh, if you have like really, really good uh, expertise in AWS, that can like be a really, really good solution. But what Firebase provides you is really cool tools with authentication, uh, alpha beta testing, cloud messaging. Firebase cloud messaging is actually, I think, really, really good. And we have, you know, you can, even if it is a serverless platform, you can run your functions on cloud by using cloud, uh, cloud functions. And you have NoSQL database that also has functions like, you know, real time listening and all. Otherwise, we, you know, for example, if you're using .NET, you'll have to use another library on your backend to create a socket with your front end, right, to get real time updates. So all these things uh, you get, you know, as an offering uh, by Firebase. So it, it works out well if you want to build an MVP or, you know, build for, Less than one lakh people, somewhere around that. Mm-hmm. So, hundred thousand to two hundred thousand, I think, is a decent number for Firebase. Right. Nice. So, uh, uh, tell me about the legal side of things. Did you have to do copyright, trademark, patent interest sort of things, or uh, maybe you you didn't really focus on that very much? And, and no, much? actually, we were very uh, very serious about those those areas actually because. Uh, because I had a friend who, so I had multiple friends in the founder right. community, right? When we talk with them, they are like, you know what, this is something that you should never neglect on. You need to have your own understanding. You shouldn't like, you know, completely uh, sort of uh, have someone else, you know, taking care of this for you. You need to have basic understanding of everything. So uh, while we were in Eureka, there was there were multiple uh, startups, you know, that uh, were helping essentially out. So we had a chance to interact with the founder of that startup. They were providing services to your earliest startup in copywriting, company uh, formation, and annual compliances and things like that. So uh, we are very closely connected to them, and we sort of you know have these things. Right. With them. I always ask this question because this is something I I want um, my viewers in this channel to you know get uh, maximum information on and not uh, run into problems in the future right. when when. They think you are screwing their own startup, or if they're in the middle of their own startup, you know, they get this. Uh, the I think it's really important, you know, because let's say if you buy a domain, you know, let's say for example, uh, example.com, and uh, the example trademark is some, taken by somebody else, then right. it's going to create like a lot of issues uh, later on. You'll have to pay like premium amounts to get that, that same thing. Exactly. So, so you've got to yeah. make sure. That, you know, uh, uh, way back, I didn't even realize about all this trademark. Business, so I I actually got a domain name, a dot com domain name, and I was very happy. I think I got domain name, but domain names are quite tough to get, you know, especially dot com. Right. Then I realized that wait a minute, <laughs> yeah, I have to also get a trademark on this, and you know, this uh, trademark may not be that easy. And I I actually you know had to go through a lot of stuff uh, with all of that. Of course, I I've I've, I've completed all the legal stuff, but um, yeah, yeah, people, you know, I will probably do a uh, just a single. Uh, what I call my lessons learned podcast where I just alone speak to the camera and 
give advice and you know right. suggestions and all that. And I'll probably do one on trademarks just to <laughs> just to help people uh, understand all of this because you know uh, I think the layman, someone who isn't an lawyer or advocate, he's um, he'll just think, wow, I got this cool sounding domain name and I can just use it. And the answer to that is no, that's not as simple as all of that. Um, Absolutely. And it's very important, you know, to uh, also check for the domain before registering the trademark as well. Like otherwise, people can go the other way as well. People first yes. register trademark and then they start finding out, you know, can I get the domain or not? Yes. Because dom- getting domain can also be very expensive if it is uh, a very commonly used word. Right, because people always hold on to this. Uh, yeah, and dot coms are just so tough to get. <laughs> um, I got mine over ten years ago, uh, so <laughs> back then also it was tough, but it wasn't quite as awful as now. But now it's just. Uh, uh,